Welcome to the Voice of Hope stream. Our hope and prayer is that you are being blessed by these weekly streams and messages that we are sharing with you. Please remember to subscribe to our online channels on YouTube, on Facebook and on Instagram and to share these with other people so that they too may enjoy these blessings. If you need someone to pray for you, please send an email to prayforme at voiceofhope.church and we will definitely take you up to the Lord in prayer. Otherwise, may God bless you as you fellowship with us. I thank you. Did you know that after Daniel received a vision concerning the final days of this world, he was so astonished that he even got sick? He simply could not understand the vision. Actually, no one did. Daniel saw the development of the great controversy, everything the people of God would have to go through. And instead of revealing the explanation for everything, the Lord only asked him to seal up the vision because it referred to the future, to the time of the end. Centuries later, John the disciple also had a vision, but this time an angel who was holding a little book commanded him to figuratively eat it. The little book was sweet as honey in the mouth, but bitter in the stomach. The vision was predicting what would happen in 1844, as the Millerite movement found excitement in partially understanding the prophecy given to Daniel followed by the great disappointment of not seeing Christ coming back in the clouds. Today, we understand that this was only the beginning of the Adventist movement, and that 1844 was part of God's broad plan for humanity. In fact, we're all living in the time of the end, right now. But most people around the globe have no idea about this. That is why we need to reach all nations bringing the good news to every single person living on the surface of the earth. As you return your tithe and give your promise, think about how your faithfulness can be a blessing to those who haven't heard a word about the gospel. Pray to Jesus so you become useful in his kingdom, even before the world witnesses him coming back in the clouds. May we put our desires last and God first. Boys and girls, this is Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Rescued. The memory verse is one of my favorite memory verses. It's from Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. It says, Who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this? The message is God leads us to opportunities to serve Him and His people. Have you ever wanted to know something and mom or dad says, wait a minute? It feels as if you're going to burst with curiosity. That is probably how King Xerxes felt when he came to Esther's second banquet. King Xerxes and Haman were enjoying Esther's second banquet but the king was curious. He wanted to know what Esther wanted and why was she taking so long to tell him. Queen Esther, he said, what is it that you want? You may have up to half of my kingdom. My king, if you truly care for me, please let me live and let my people live too, she pleaded. I have been told that we are all to be killed. If we were to be sold as slaves, I would say nothing, but we are to be destroyed. What? Who has done this? Where is he? The king shouted angrily. It is Haman, that man, 
said Esther, pointing at Haman. Haman stopped eating. He was frightened. He hadn't expected Esther to know. He could tell the king was very angry. The king slammed down his glass and stormed from the room. Haman knew the king would kill him, so he threw himself on Queen Esther to beg for mercy. Just then, the king walked back into the room. Haman, he roared, how dare you attack the queen, especially while I am still here. As soon as the king said the words, the king's servants rushed forward. They covered Haman's face and took him away. One of the king's servants, Harbona, spoke to the king. Haman has built a hanging platform in his own yard. He built it for Mordecai, the man who warned you about the plan to kill you. Hang Haman on it, the king ordered. King Xerxes gave Queen Esther everything Haman owned. Esther told the king that Mordecai was her cousin. She explained how Mordecai had raised her. The king sent for Mordecai. He gave Mordecai the ring that he had taken back from Haman. That ring was a symbol of the power the king gave to Mordecai. Mordecai was now the king's assistant. Esther wasn't finished with her work yet. She went back into the king's throne room and knelt before him. The king held out his scepter to her again. Esther stood. She begged him to stop Haman's plan. Please, my king, help us. Please do something to cancel Haman's orders, she cried. I can't cancel that law because it was sealed with my signet ring, he said. But I can do something. Have Mordecai tell my secretaries what to write. After they are done, he can seal the orders with the ring I gave him. Mordecai told the secretaries what to write. The Jews could fight back against anyone who tried to kill them. They could also take the property of anyone who tried. Soon the letters were done and sealed with the king's seal. The king's special messengers rushed to deliver them throughout the land. The Jews in Susa shouted for joy when they heard the new orders. Everywhere they were delivered, the Jewish people celebrated. Some other people even became Jews. From that day to this day, Jews have celebrated the Feast of Purim. For two days each year they celebrate. They remember how Esther and Mordecai served God, how they helped save God's people from death. Get to work.
saints. We want to thank the Lord for the blessings that he has afforded us in troublesome times such as we live in. The blessing of uh, sitting around his word and gathering as much power from his presence as we can is a rare opportunity and I therefore want to be the first to consider myself really blessed to be exposed to that. I want to thank the Lord in a very, very special way this morning for the privilege that he has afforded us here at Good Hope SDA Church. The privilege to sit around his word, but remember his word is himself. So it's the privilege again to sit in his presence. And by the way, I can say this and vouch for the word of God. Whenever we sit around the word of God, we can never be the same. And whenever he is with us, he makes sure life begins to make sense and has meaning. I want to thank the Lord for the text that is before us that we will consider. We will be going through the text that is found in the book of Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon, the third chapter running from verse 1 up to verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter uh, 3, verses 1 to 6. Before we go into that, may we bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, it is not by mistake that we are in your presence. Neither is it by happenstance that we find ourselves in such times and seasons of life as we find ourselves. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for making sure there is a bridge. Even when COVID strikes, you create a bridge so that we can never run away from your presence or be isolated from your presence. Thank you, Holy One. As you administer grace through your word, Heavenly Father, there is somebody in in in, under the, the power of, of, of life and under the challenges of life, who is struggling through uh, some challenging moments of life. Oh, Father, I pray for the rarest and richest of blessings as you descend in power upon their circumstances and transform their negative moments to moments of victory and moments of glory. And Father, as the word is read, you said it shall be accompanied by power. It shall be accompanied also by signs and miracles. Wherever we may be, oh Father, I pray, let each member of this church be touched in a special way. But greater still, let everyone who will come across the power and the glory of your word be touched in a very, very special way. Let this way be the answer that somebody has been longing to hear and been longing to meet for years. Bless us as we read through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever 
will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin. And the peace that endureth, thy non presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hopes for tomorrow, blessings of mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, no mercies I see, all I have need that thy hand hath Provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. As we go through the passages of scripture that we will consider this morning, may this remain as the core of this presentation, that no matter what happens in life, no matter what we may go through, remember this as an anchor to life, as an anchor while the tempests of life rise and while they fall. There is one masterpiece that must remain so engraved into our hearts and into our minds that God is faithful. No matter what happens, God is faithful. Many are, faith, are, faith, are not as faithful as God. Many are not worthy our trust. Many are not worthy our confidence. But God is faithful. Let us turn to scripture therefore and start excavating beautiful gems that we will live by. That will guide our lives as we are ushered into this challenging moment of COVID again. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1, the Bible reads in the New King James Version, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life, and peace they will add to you. Verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. If there was a necklace, it should be a necklace constituting of mercy and truth. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and of man. Trust in the law with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. As we have read his word, may the Lord truly add a blessing upon our lives. Let's, let's, let's go through first things. The very first element that we must focus on is the very opening lines of this, uh, of this text. My son, do not forget my law. I don't know whether it was coming from 
prophet Solomon himself writing to his son, whether it was coming from David writing to Solomon his son, whether it was coming from Bathsheba writing to Solomon her son. But whoever finds this script must understand as they read that God sons them, fathers them, and therefore each one of us is addressed by God as a son. But greater still, we who are gender sensitive must understand that whenever the Lord talks of a son, most of the cases he is addressing the power of an heir, the one who has the right to inherit that which the father owns. And so, it's, if it's a young lady who is heir, she still belongs to the category of sons. If it's a young man, he still belongs to the category of sons. And then he goes on to say, do not forget my law. Do not forget my law. And, but let your heart keep my commandments, or my commands. I want us to address two elements here that are uh, quite fascinating. Element number one, the element of the law. Law, a law to me is understood, I understand the law as that which is a principle that forms a hedge around me, that which secures me within the parameters of order and of life. But when I come to commands, commands to me are instructions to be performed. And therefore the father, the mother, or God himself says unto us, no matter what changes you may meet in life, no matter the pain of life, do not forget. If you want security, if you want to be safe, remain within the parameters of my law, my son. But greater still, if you want longevity of life, enjoy that which I command you, the imperatives of life. Imperatives of life, why? Because God has seen life from eternity to come and has seen life from eternity past. And for your own information, if you must order your life according as to the advantage of a man who advises you, you must order your life according as God who knows better, who knows the end from the beginning. And when he advises you, he advises you to order your life by power of commands. And therefore, as we have understood the elements of the law and the command, I want us to understand the element number three that we must enjoy this, this morning. And that element is found in verses six and verses five. And the Lord speaks through Solomon this powerful word as a command. It's not an optional element. It is not an either or case or situation. God speaks it as an imperative. That which you are obligated for the best of your life to do. And then God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's a command. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That, that is what is expected from each one of us. I know right now we feel like uh, we are imprisoned again. We feel like uh, this thing is torturing us again. But it does not matter the seasons of life. It does not matter the changes of life. We have enjoyed a little bit of respite from this thing for some time. And I don't know whether the, 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 the thing is bad or good, but all advantages come only as we enlist and listen to the word of God. The advice of God is simple. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Powerful instruction. Trust in the Lord. Why? Because all other elements of life always change. We have been used to so much peace for so long. We have enjoyed our independence here in this beautiful country of ours. But at the end of the day, nothing is permanent. The presidents have changed. From Baba Mandela, we have had so many men who have led us up to this date. And each one of us, each one of them, comes up with some package that he promises us. But at the end of the day, the deliverables are not concrete. They are not sure. They change. 
And then the advice of the Lord comes as a simple instruction. Trust in the Lord because he does not change. He is faithful no matter the circumstances. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord because seasons change. Seasons change. It was winter and a painful one too. Very, very cold. But now we are in summer and others are already complaining that it's raining too much here around Josie. Others are complaining that it's too hot. It's unbearable. Seasons change. If your trust and faith was in season, then you are also suffering now and you are hopeless because seasons have changed. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Why? Because he is the only God who is of his nature and of his kind. For your own information, he is the only one who is God, the creator. He is the only one who knows to order life from end to beginning. He is the only one who understands, who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He is the only one who is sensitive to our needs. He is the only one who knows. Therefore, if he knew we were coming to COVID or saints, Believe you me, trust in the Lord because he knows. He knows the end from the beginning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What is to trust? To me, to trust is to deposit your life in the Lord. To trust is to enter with confidence in an element that will secure or in a space that will secure or in a... In, in, in an environment that will secure your life and will never compromise it. The life that you have is so pressed back, front, and every other angle. But only one man is sure to stand with you no matter the pressures of life. Trust, therefore, is an element that suggests that in, if anything may change... Trust, that which is trusted may never change. And to me, I have scaled. There are many things that can be trusted. Cars can be trusted. Many trust in them. And David says, some trust in their chariots. Some trust in their horsemen. Some trust in their armies. But I will put my trust in the Lord. Therefore, if we are to trust, let us make sure when we deposit trust, when we deposit our lives into elements that we must trust, we must deposit our life in an element that never changes. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is constant. He is consistent. He never changes. Husbands change. That's the reality of life. You sleep with your wife facing east and she wakes up facing north or west facing south but at the end of the day if she can change while she's asleep how can you trust her I've heard men is crying and suffering when they say I, he, he really broke my trust I really trusted him I really had confidence in him he is a human being he changes he vacillates he is not constant. He cannot be relied upon. He cannot even rely upon himself. How can you dare trust him? Trust in the Lord. It's an instruction. It's a command. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Please, saints, may you understand that as we are ushered into any phase of life, there is one man who is sure to come into that stage with us, and that is God himself. And he never changes. Lo, I am with you until the end of the age. That's what he says in Matthew chapter 28 and verses 19 going down. I am with you until the end of the age. And he promises. He never sleeps, no slumber. That's what he says in, 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 in Psalms. And in Psalm 46, he simply teaches us also that he is a reliable friend, a very present and a true friend whenever we are in need. So God must be trusted. He is the only one that must be trusted. Men change. Food, diets change. And uh, lifestyle changes. From one when, when you could afford, when you couldn't afford, you had one kind of lifestyle that you enjoyed. But now that you can afford, there is a few other things that have changed. If life can change, 
You need a constant. When stresses come, you need a constant. Trust in the Lord. When pain comes, when losses come, when burials and funerals come, it does not matter their season, but when they come, trust in the Lord with all your heart. This is the only element that we have been given or we have been challenged by God to do and never share it with other people or with other elements. By the way, we can love our neighbors as ourselves and we can love God too. We can love our children and love God too. We can love our wives and love God too. We can love any other element. But when it comes to trust, God is too selfish. He cannot share that space with anybody. He wants it all to himself. Why? Because he knows if you do it, it is to the safety of your life. If you do it, it's to the peace of your life. If you do it, it's for the longevity of your life. Trust in the Lord. It's a commandment that God is giving us. Trust in the Lord in the summer of life. Trust in the Lord in the winter of life. Trust in the Lord when the winds blow. Trust in the Lord when it is so quiet, you are wondering whether you are the only one on earth. Trust in the Lord when there is confusion in life. Trust in the Lord, in the Lord when you are sure of what you are doing. Trust in the Lord when there is no direction. Trust in the Lord when you are sure-footed as a God. Trust in the Lord. And then the Bible teaches us one powerful element to expound that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. I know we will be clever in the process of living. We will look like we are intelligent. We are knowledgeable. We will look like we have done good research. It does not matter how much information you have amassed. It does not matter how literate or illiterate you are. At the end of the day, don't even lean on your own understanding. For your understanding also is short-lived. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. That means if you can't lean on your husband, you can't lean on your wife, if you can't lean on your bank account, if you can't lean on any other element of life, and you can only lean on God, therefore you can't even lean on yourself. You are not clever enough. You are not brilliant enough. You are not blessed enough. Only God can be trusted and must be trusted. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. This is a practice you must enjoy. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Even in this painful season, as it looks as though it's getting gloomier than the, the, this uh, fourth wave looks so intimidating, but at the end of the day, God is faithful. When everything is beyond our understanding and comprehension and beyond our ability to decipher the end from the beginning, there is one who understands, there is one who knows, there is one who descends, there is one who passed through this uh, miserable moment before we could come to it. And by the way, we are the right generation to live in this treacherous time. Because God, from his discernment, understood that nobody else can endure and nobody else can walk through and nobody else can be challenged as well by this, by this moment and this season as we would. And even when we are challenged, God still holds true to his promises. He is faithful and great is his faithfulness. Dear beloved saints, I know, sometimes we look clever, sometimes we look wise, sometimes we look like we have researched enough, sometimes we, 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 we have become so understanding to a point where we believe that whatever medical opinion that we gather or that we have acquired is the best opinion. By the way, every day they are releasing new information and because of that, each wave of information is an opinion, the most current, the most recent opinion. 
And if we were to pursue opinions, we will soon be lost. We will soon entangle ourselves with the, uh, with the pain and the sorrows of life. And we will soon entangle ourselves with the miseries of life. And God seeks to give us peace. And the peace is solemnly by trusting in the Lord. I'm saying to all of us this morning and this moment, there is an anchor when the storm is most violent. I'm saying to all of us, there is an anchor when the sea is so turbulent. I'm saying to all of us, there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Where, where storms cannot molest, where sin cannot molest, that place is when man finds confidence to deposit their trust, their confidence in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and lean not on your own understanding. You are not clever enough. God is clever enough. You are not wise enough. God is wise enough. Even when the tempest is rising, do not be stupid like Peter and his cronies and start seeking to save the Savior. By all means, go down the ship of your life in prayer and awaken the Master and say, Master, carest thou not that we perish. And for your own information, he is not sleeping because he doesn't care. He is not sleeping, he is not quiet because he is so distant. He is quiet because he is waiting for the time that you would come to him and acknowledge your own limitedness. We are limited. God is not limited. He is unlimited. May the Lord bless us as we seek higher ground. As we seek to live by the, in the laws of God, by the commandments of God. The instruction specific, trust in the Lord. All else is thinking said, God is the rock of ages. And he is there and will be there no matter what happens. And he will see us through. As we come to the end of the service, we want to thank the Lord and ask all of us to bow our heads in solemn prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father. Thank you that there is an element we can trust. We can deposit our confidence in. And that element is yourself. When the storms are wild, when the wildest of winds blow, dear Father, there is still peace in your presence. Oh Father, may we find joy in resting our confidence in you. Even as the storm arises, Oh, Father, it is my prayer. May we not look at the storm. May we seek him who is greater than the storm. Him who created even the winds and the elements of the winds. And dear Father, who knows how to instruct and when to instruct winds. Who also has empowered us to instruct the winds. We are not victims, Heavenly Father. We are more than conquerors. This is why you have allowed these tests to come our way. Even as we are tested, may we arise like sons of Almighty God that trust in their Father and say peace. Be still. Bring us peace and comfort and joy as we weather the storm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.